In this video, you see American figure skater Caroline Zhang performing a so-called pearl spin, one of her signature moves. Quite amazing, isn't it? The dynamics of spinning tops is one of the major themes in classical mechanics. The problem is, to describe the motion of a rigid rotating body, one point of it is being kept fixed. As you can see, spinning tops come in many different shapes and sizes. And the way they react to our Earth gravity field can be quite surprising. Look at this, a spinning gyroscope seemingly defying our Earth gravity. Or a so-called tippy top, effortlessly just flipping around. In the late 18th century, Two mathematicians, Leonard Euler on the left and Joseph Louis Lagrange on the right, were able to solve the equations of motions that govern the movement of two kinds of spinning tops, which since then have been associated with their names. They are called the Euler top and the Lagrange top. However, the motion of a spinning rotating body of just arbitrary size and shape is non-integrable, meaning chaotic. However, this woman, Sofia Kovaleskaya, found a third and final case that can be described precisely. This is now called the Kovaleskaya top. Now, there are many shapes that qualify as being a Kovaleskaya top. For example, a figure skater doing a particularly elegant spin. However, the simplest example of a Kovaleskaya top you see right here. It's constructed from those two equal masses on the side, a third equal mass on the top, and a ring of twice the mass of each of those cylinders. It has a center of mass that is located on that vertical axis just above that ring. Describing the movement in this case, in many respects, is the most difficult one. Here you see next, in the next clip, a visualization of what the movement of this Kovaleskaya top would look like. However, in the real world, you would actually have to build a frame and some sort of suspension that would keep that one point fixed in space, but allow for the free rotation of the rest of it. This is what it looks like. And you can see the motion, the movement can be quite complicated. Now, if this last case, as I said, is in many respects the most complicated one, and Sofia Kovaleskaya was the one who figured it out, how come we so rarely have heard about her? whereas Euler and Lagrange probably make an experience in every other college-level math class. This is even more surprising, since Sofia Kovaleskaya was this amazing person. Born in Moscow in 1850, she dedicated her life to mathematical research, which was very uncommon at this time. She even agreed to a marriage of convenience with a Russian radical only to be allowed to leave the country and study math, which back then was only possible abroad. In 1889, she was given a full professorship of mathematics at Stockholm University, the first woman in Europe in modern times to hold such a position. One year before, she had won this very prestigious prize of the Paris Academy of Science for her complete solution of the spinning top that I showed you earlier. Now, despite all of these achievements, she was never made a full-fledged member of the Russian Academy of Science or offered a professorship in her own country. And in Western Europe, her contributions were belittled as insignificant examples and as being mostly derivative of the thoughts of the big, I might add, male mathematicians of her time. 
Unfortunately, Sophia died at the age of only 41 from influenza. And her role, her pioneering role as female mathematician, largely became forgotten until the end of the 20th century. Now, why is that? I think part of it is the way we think about mathematical research achievements. In 2008, in his address to the American Mathematical Society, late physicist and mathematician Freeman Dyson spoke about how some mathematicians are birds and some mathematicians are frogs. This became famous almost instantly. Here you see his birds and frogs depicted on the cover of a book containing his selected works. Now, when we say some mathematicians are birds and some mathematicians are frogs, we rarely mean that literally, right? Instead, what we mean is that the mathematical birds fly high in the air, serving the broad vistas of mathematics, whereas the mathematical frogs live down in the mud just seeing the close-up beauty of the flower in front of them and hopping from flower to flower. Now, Freeman Dyson resolutely was a frog and said that some of his best friends were birds. He also emphasized that for scientific discovery and progress, both birds and frogs are needed. But if we are really honest, when it comes to remembering the names in mathematics, we often favor the birds. You know, the big names in mathematics that have entire school of mathematical thinking named after them. Sofia Kovaleskaya was certainly a mathematical frog, and her complete solution of the Kovaleskaya, what we now call Kovaleskaya top, was a beautiful, you might say, frog's work. But we should be careful not to equate this kind of work with being less important. In fact, her work, what critics called just doing examples, 150 years today, still proves to be absolutely groundbreaking and inspiring. Sofia Kovaleskaya, for the first time, established common features between very different fields of mathematics and physics and united them. Fields that are the focus of big research groups at major universities around the country. Fields like algebraic geometry, differential equations, mathematical physics. So yes, you can think of the Kovaleskaya top as yet another strange toy and her solution as just an example. But this toy and this solution might prove absolutely critical when it comes to understanding the cutting-edge science of the 21st century, like a new state of matter known as Bose-Einstein condensate. That state was discovered in the late 20th century and might hold the key to engineering the advanced materials of the 21st century, like very precise motion sensors or so-called high-temperature superconductors. Now, if we go back to the Kovaleskaya top, you see that it can actually move in many different ways. At low energy, you can just have this typical pendulum motion, whereas at high energies, Gravity is no longer dominant, and you get those stable rotations. But if you spin it just right, then you can also get this typical processional motion that you might remember from your childhood spinning toy top. As I said, the Kovaleskaya top is in many respects the most difficult because it encapsulates all those different cases and their ranges of motion. Now, the absolute novel point about Kovaleskaya's work was that she described all these different possibilities and their ranges of motion using geometry. How do you get to geometry here? 
Well, you can start by recording the position of a fixed reference point the way the Kovaleskaya top sees it as it moves around. This is what it might look like. Be careful, it might make you dizzy. Now, the point here is that the trace of this external reference point in the internal frame of the spinning top draws an interesting curve onto a sphere. It creates some interesting geometry. However, this geometry is not quite enough. It doesn't contain quite enough data to really describe the motion of the Kovaleskaya top completely. For that, you have to go to an extended geometry, a theoretical construct that works in the background and that encodes, next to the visible ranges of motion, also other important physical parameters, like the velocity. Now, this abstract geometry behind the scene is difficult to describe. It actually turns out it's four-dimensional, so you can't fully visualize it. But what you can do is you can take some clever projections of it into our three-dimensional space. Here you see such a projection of a geometry, and this geometry now encodes the ranges of motion of the Kovaleskaya top. So, describing the movement of a Kovaleskaya top, thanks to Sophia, translates into describing those associated abstract geometries. Now, you might say, those geometries look crazy, but from a mathematical point of view, they are actually much easier to describe. In a way, what we started doing is thinking about the problem more abstractly, in a way, without getting dizzy from trying to follow the crazy movement of the Kovaleskaya top. Now, in the modern laboratories of our time, scientists don't just look at spinning tops. They also do other cool stuff. For example, they take gases of bosons and cool them down in temperature to almost absolute zero, that is, about minus 273 degrees Celsius. At these temperatures, gases form a new state of matter known as Bose-Einstein condensate. In the sequence of pictures, you see a record of one of the first Bose-Einstein condensates ever created in a lab, represented by that blue peak right in the middle. Now, for Bose-Einstein condensate, Quantum mechanics rules their world, and the peculiar phenomena of quantum mechanics become visible macroscopically. Now, in recent years, scientists have not only learned how to make those Bose-Einstein condensates from different substances, they also started performing experiments on these Bose-Einstein condensates themselves. For example, you can take a Bose-Einstein condensate and put it in what we call a rotating magnetic trap. Now, if you spin that rotating magnetic trap really fast, the Bose-Einstein condensate starts behaving like a Kovaleskaya top. So this experiment was actually done at the Center for ultra cool Atoms at MIT very recently. In the first clip, you see that the rotating Bose-Einstein condensate, rather than pouring off to all sides like your overflowing coffee mug, it rather behaves like a pendulum mounted on a merry-go-round. Look at the second clip where the whole situation is shown in the internal frame of the rotating Bose-Einstein condensate. A discrete line is forming, which becomes thinner and thinner, but eventually maintains a finite size. What's going on here can be accurately described using the same methods Kovaleskaya used to describe her complete solution of the spinning top. And there you have it. Kovaleskaya demonstrated for the first time that a dynamical problem like a spinning top, 
can be described using geometric structure. Yes, it was in an example. Kovaleskaya was a mathematical frog. However, her work united different fields of mathematics and physics. And here on the, on the right, you see the cover page of the famous article that won her those famous awards. We should remember Sofia Kovaleskaya as a mathematical frog that saw these amazing connections between mathematics and physics and united them, inspiring not only figure skater, but also the cutting edge science of today. This is quite something. And in fact, it's something no bird had ever seen. Thank you. <laughs>